basic photography secret you wish you knew a year ago. A photograph is not always a representation of what is seen. In fact, it often conveys many thoughts or ideas of the photographer. And the argument to date still remains. Can a photograph speak much more louder than words? Well, this is surely a debatable issue, which also completely depends upon the viewer. Photography is not just about having the right equipment or studying the most advanced courses. A good photographer requires skill and keen powers of observation to be able to capture the best possible image. Even though it is still seen as a hobby, photography is one of the most sought after professions in recent times. And to be a successful photographer requires practice, observation, the right equipment, and at times, a little bit of lady luck. If you have a keen interest or passion for photography, then take a look at these techniques and tips, which will act as your basic introduction to the world of photography. With the increase in technological improvements to today's digital camera, more and more people are taking up this artistic medium. Digital cameras are now becoming the most in demand when it comes to the average hobbyist or traveller. But many photographers still prefer to use SLR cameras and choose the old fashioned way to capture their idea or vision on film. You know, there is nothing like the excitement of bringing one's photograph to light in a dark room. This beginner's guide to photography mentions some important points in relation to the technical aspects of photography as well as those from an artistic point of view. Knowing accurate aperture settings can only be achieved with practice and time. The aperture is the size of the lens opening. Aperture settings are very important as they control the amount of light being let into the camera. This is particularly true when the photographer prefers to opt for the manual mode. A small aperture setting simply means more light can pass through the lens, whereas a high aperture setting means quite the opposite. Less light can pass through the lens. Also, this goes hand in hand with the shutter speed of a camera. On manual cameras, shutter speeds are set in a dial on the top frame. And by adjusting the shutter speed, one can control the amount of time for which the shutter remains open when the photographer takes a picture. A fast shutter speed allows the shutter to open and close in fractions of a second and does not give the problem of camera shake. However, in low light, a photographer may need to open the aperture more and keep the shutter on a low speed, several seconds. This is when there are more chances of camera shake due to low light. To help alleviate the problem, Photographers use a tripod or monopod to help stabilise the camera, which in turn allows for better photographs in low light conditions. Every film available has a speed rating. This is indicated in terms of ISO or ASA. This term is always affixed with the speed of the film. For example, 100 ISO ASA or 400 ISO ASA. The higher the number of the film, the lesser the amount of light required for a photograph. Therefore, films with a higher ISO ASA can be used for low light situations. Films with a low number are meant for daylight. This is because the film is relatively low in terms of sensitivity. A good photographer should be able to understand what effect light plays when composing a photograph. A person with good powers of observation will be able to understand the required amount of light needed for a stunning photograph. When there is too much light, the ultimate result will be a washed out effect, whereas when there is very little light, the photograph may appear unclear, dark or even completely black. The best way to learn this, besides practice, will be to study works of famous photographers so you can get an understanding of the importance of how light affects a composition and the subsequent effect it has on colours. Look at the subject from various angles and try to think differently. Often, a beginner tries to capture a scene without looking at it from different points of view. There were more times than not just put the subject in the middle of the photograph. For instance, if you are into nature photography, try to look at the centre focus from a different point of view. 
This will help you to hone your skills of looking at objects from various angles and also help you develop your ability to choose the best possible composition. Practice and creativity will help you to sharpen your skills and turn you into a complete professional. And remember, always allow your creativity to flow.